Now, um, Joe Biden's getting a bit of a push from sources closer to him than expected. Ezra Klein, uh, a lefty who's committed to the leftist agenda, is saying, you know, we don't have to do this. Uh, maybe there's another option available to us. Um, Joe Biden, you know, I don't think he can get the ball across the finish line. I'm nervous and I don't like being nervous. And I don't have to be nervous because we've got at least someone great right in reserve, Kamala Harris. She's been underestimated. And if you don't like Kamala Harris, he actually goes on to name, he's like, look at the bench. It's amazing. Gretchen Whitmer, Gavin Newsom, AOC. He mentions AOC uh. as a possible sub in. Now look, the reason this is interesting is because this is somebody who the White House could potentially be reading and paying attention to. And it just shows some more fractions over there on the left, fractures uh, over on the left when it comes to maintaining Biden as the nominee. Yeah, so there's a there's a chance, and who knows, because it's all a mystery in some sense, but there's a chance that their pride that they could resurrect Biden's poll numbers will be their downfall. Uh, there's a chance that they felt that they could just turn it around and run enough TV ads. Now, they have a very impressive infrastructure of ballot chasing. We've talked about that before, Megan, and their ability to have thousands of full-time people on the ground and chase early ballots. But that all, to a certain extent, falls apart if all of a sudden you can't crack 35%. I was going through realclearpolitics.com uh, the other day, and I found it really interesting. You know who the most stable polar is the person who actually has the most consistent number is RFK. He's right near that 14 to 18 percent almost consistently where Trump and Biden are all over the place. 38, 42, 44. 30, it's, they're all over the place. RFK is right near that 14 to 18 percent. Six months ago, I said the exact opposite. I will say now, though, and I think this is one of the reasons why Ezra Klein is saying, hey, we got to get rid of this guy. Six months ago, I think RFK was hurting Trump more than Biden. I think RFK is hurting Biden more than Trump. I think he's yep. becoming kind of a protest vote. I think Democrats are saying, I can't support Biden. You know, okay, the Kennedy name seems perfectly fine. And I think that is one of the reasons why you're seeing the collective uh, intelligentsia of the Democrat party continue to freak out, but they're running out of time. And if they think that Kamala Harris is an all-star player, I <laughs> hope they select Kamala Harris. Listen, listen to the rehab on her by Ezra Klein. You're going to love this. Um, in private settings, she's enormously magnetic and compelling. Sure, Jan. Her challenge would be translating that into a public persona, which is, and let's be blunt about this, a hard thing to do when you've grown up in a world that has always been quick to find your faults. A world that is afraid of women being angry, of black people being angry, a world where, for most of your life, it was demanded of you that you be cautious and careful and measured and never make a mistake. And then you get on the public stage and people say, oh, you're too cautious and too careful and too measured. It's a very, very, very hard bind to get out of. But maybe she can do it. <laughs> it's her was this being Ezra a Klein? woman and being, yeah, and being a black woman that really, that's what's causing her troubles on the public stage, Charlie. You see, like, I've overcome it's race, it's racism, my lady it's parts yeah. to be able to not be cautious and careful and measured and never make it. It's amazing. I've been able to overcome that, notwithstanding all the estrogen raging in my body. And apparently Kamala Harris was just a too strong a combo, I guess, being black and being a woman. Therefore, that's why she is the way she is. I mean, okay, tell it to Condoleezza Rice because well, she doesn't suffer from any of those problems. In politics and just like in life, there's the X factor. It's just something about Kamala Harris is she's just deeply unlikable. Just, yeah. just it's very similar to Hillary. It's she just looks so ambitious in a bad way, just synthetic and fake and transactional and artificial. And so if they want to replace Joe Biden with Kamala Harris, let's be honest. The only reason why Joe Biden is still around is because they're not too thrilled about their number two. If they had a superstar at number two, th this, this rodeo would have been rearranged six months ago. Mm -hmm. He does begin his piece, interestingly, by saying, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way, he's not up for this, Joe Biden. He says, I think he's a good president. I don't like having this conversation. And I know a lot of liberals and Democrats will be furious at me. I still think Biden might win against Trump. It's just that there's a very good chance he might lose, maybe even better than even odds. And Trump is dangerous. I want better odds than that. Yes, well, it's too late so to throw it to the primaries, but it's not too late to do something. 
you're isolating something really important, which is after Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton in 2016, the Democrats operate in we must eliminate all risk, that we can't even have a 5% or a 10% chance. They were so traumatized by what happened in 2016, which I think is at the root of a lot of the lawfare stuff and trying to kick Donald Trump off the ballot, which is I, I don't think they will be able to handle looking at election returns and even seeing it close. I, I think some of them don't even have the, the, the genetic material to deal with that. It's they're so invested with making sure Donald Trump won't become president again. That's Ezra Klein is like, I can't leave it up to chance. We have to do whatever it takes. So that means switching out Biden, kicking Trump off the ballot. And it's, it's fascinating. I mean, we call it Trump derangement syndrome. Their identity is wrapped up in this. Their, their, their daily obsession is preventing Donald Trump from ever getting back in the White House. And if there's even a 5% risk, that's not, that's not good enough for Ezra Klein. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, you have Nate Silver of 538 Polling. Now he's got his own Substack saying, it's time for the White House to put up or shut up. And he's got a different plan for President Biden. Okay, this is actually very interesting. Here's what I'd propose, quoting here. Over the course of the next several weeks, Biden should do, ready? Four lengthy sit-down interviews with non-friendly sources. Non-friendly doesn't mean hostile. The proposed options, Charlie? The New York Times, the Washington Uh Post, 60 Minutes, and maybe um, even the Wall Street Journal op-ed page. So he writes, he writes what he wants at the op-ed page, or even a team of writers at the dispatch, which... I mean, I like I like Jonah Goldberg, Steve, but like those are never Trumpers. Those are people who would, would definitely yeah. be voting for Biden instead of Trump. So these are his plan for the the tough, non friendly sources. He should do the lengthy sit downs with it. What do you make of that resurrection plan? Yeah, the, the New York Times is the non friendly source. You know, I'd have yeah. some. I, I would. I just want to see. I think it should have to be like a prerequisite that you have to be able to sit through a 90 minute long form podcast interview to become president in the modern era. It's kind of the mm-hmm. new litmus test. Donald Trump could do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, to, to, I mean, yeah. he sat down with you and, and over an you know, hour, you asked he kept him it tough, rolling. Tough questions. Yep, exactly. And I mean, I, I was expecting when you were saying that, it's like, are they going to say Joe Rogan? I mean, of course, I mean, J- he got there eventually Joe Biden? at the end, at the oh, end, he said, oh, really? go on Ezra Klein's podcast, question mark, go on Rogan. Just kidding. I okay. think, but Bernie Sanders did it. Yeah, well, I mean, Bernie Sanders, to his credit, is far more there than Joe Biden. I mean, he's yeah. old, but he's, you know, he, he's still, he still can put a couple sentences together. Look, the, there, there's this collective freak out. They're running out of time. And they also have said, the other Democrat intelligentsia, have, you know, in these op-eds, like, well, do we really want to put this in the hands of Democrat activists? And th- that, that's code for saying they might get someone insane to become their nominee like that's code of being like well we don't want you know Rashida Tlaib or Elon <laughs> Omar to be our nominee right that's yes. kind of their code of saying it and again I just repeat the third party element here adds a great deal of chance and mystery it's a very it's very very hard to poll when there's three candidates um, whoever has the stronger base will end up winning in a third you know typically in a three party or four party uh, five candidate um, type uh, situation. And so you have Nate Silver, you have Ezra Klein, but I don't see any movement with this being said, Megan, I don't see a single piece of evidence that Joe Biden is letting go of power, that the people around him, they almost yep. seem to be white knuckling. Um, it seems as if they're gearing up and ramping up and there has not been a sign of life for Joe Biden in polling. He still is significantly down. He does have an advantage when it comes to the plumbing of the elections, the infrastructure, the early voting. Uh, But as far as likability and popularity, uh, Joe Biden remains to be in trouble. The Megyn Kelly Show is supported by Grand Canyon University. Founded in 1949, GCU is a private Christian university that's dedicated to delivering an affordable and transformative higher education. Their vibrant campus is located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. And according to Niche.com, ranked a top 25 best campus in the country. As of June 2023, GCU offers 330 academic programs, with over 270 of them online, allowing you the freedom to earn your degree on your time from wherever you are. At GCU, your degree, whether it's a bachelor's, master's, or doctorate, integrates the free market system and a welcoming Christian worldview. Learn more about GCU's programs, competitive tuition rates, and scholarship offers 
from your university counselor. They are part of the supportive graduation team who takes a personalized approach to helping you achieve your academic goals, walking alongside you every step of the way. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. For more info or to enroll, visit gcu.edu. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.